the day. Here it is. It reads, Thank you so much. I am immensely grateful. Very best wishes, Bill Bryson. Now, what was he talking about? Well, I had sent him a complimentary copy of my new book, which is entitled, Who Made God? Now, let me first of all introduce myself. My name is Edgar Andrews. I am a, a scientist, not a musician, as you may have guessed. And I am the Emeritus Professor of Materials Science in the University of London, England. Now, I'm sure you've heard of Richard Dawkins, uh, who has written a book called The God Delusion, and uh, many other books, in fact. Now, Richard Dawkins is promoting atheism. Not only does he not himself believe in God, but he doesn't think anybody else should believe in God. And because he is a scientist, uh, he is quoting and citing science as support for his atheistic position. Now, I am also a scientist, uh, and I have written this book in order to contradict what Richard Dawkins is telling us. Now, Richard Dawkins has been strongly promoted by the BBC and certain national newspapers in England and has therefore influenced a lot of people. Well, I hope this book is going to influence a lot of people too, but in the opposite direction. It's written in a popular style. There are some quite profound things in it, uh, quite a lot of science and philosophy and theology, but it's written for the man in the street, for the average person uh, who has perhaps been influenced by Richard Dawkins and, and other people like him who are also writing and promoting atheism today. The Archbishop of uh, York had a look at the book and very kindly wrote me a letter which says, I can see your book is written in a very lively style and conveys complex subjects in palatable form. I hope it will be a rejoinder to those atheists who imagine that they have the last word. So, Dr. Sentamu obviously thinks that the book is, is readable and that other uh, household name, Faye Weldon, the novelist and broadcaster, uh, uh, writes a commendation for the book, which says uh, on the front cover, thoughtful, readable, witty, wise. It's written for the layman, so that even people who are not scientists or do not have any specialist knowledge in this area can read it and see the other side of the story. Uh, there is a certain problem with the question, who made God? The atheists ask that question because they think that believers in God, like myself, can't answer it. They think it is an unanswerable question. However, it is really a nonsense question. A bit like that other question that you can't answer, how long is a piece of string? Now you can't answer that question, not because there's no such thing as a piece of string, nor because uh, a piece of string has no particular length. You can't answer the question because it doesn't define which piece of string you're talking about. In exactly the same way, the question, if, if God made everything, who made God, uh, is an unanswerable question only because it is a nonsense question because it fails to define what it means by God. If you define God, as I do, as the God of the Bible, the uncreated creator of all things, then you can see how foolish it is to ask who created the uncreated one. But my purpose is not just to 
rebut the arguments of Richard Dawkins and his friends. My purpose is to promote a positive worldview, a positive understanding of life, the universe and everything if you like. And that positive understanding is an understanding based squarely upon the Bible. One of the people commending the book says Richard Dawkins has more than met his match. Well, the only way you can discover whether he's right or not is to read the book for yourself. Who made God? Find the answer. Read the book. The book is available online from www.epbooks.org O-R-G Or you can get it from Amazon online or from bookshops. And if you want to know more, uh, turn in and look at the dedicated website that we've set up for the book which is www.whomadegod Dot com and who made God is spelt as a single word without the question mark. Good reading.